I never just preach a sermon and end it. I'm always preaching a series. And for the morning service for the next several weeks, we'll be preaching out of the book of Judges. What book? Book of Judges. You look good sitting toward the front, not spread out all over. You look good. You may not feel good, but you look good. Good, good. More intimacy, more of a sense of worship. Book of Judges, the second chapter. And let's go back and look again now at that key verse that uh, Trudy read. Um, verse 10. Would you read that with me? Verse 10, Judges 2, verse 10. I need your help, please. All together, and also the generation were gathered unto their fathers. And there arose another generation after them. Now, you, 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 don't, you don't want to read that fast. You don't want to read that fast. Now the Bible's introducing now a thought for reflection. The old guard is gone. Joshua, the leader, is gone. And now we're going into another era. And the Bible announces that era by saying, and there arose what? Another generation. And then, and then, it defines and qualifies that generation. And the words are alarming. Uh, which what? Say it again. Which what? <laughs> My breath is taken away. A, a whole generation? And the generation before them has lived under the miracles of, of Joshua and, and Moses? Come on, folk. How does a generation who has experienced that kind of dynamic spiritual engagement with God, I mean, read about this generation that was with Joshua. Read about them. Awesome generation. <laughs> And they produce a generation that knows not the Lord? Somebody this morning ought to be upset and concerned. Is it possible that the Bible is sending Rick a message to us? Is it possible that a praying parent and a Sabbath-observing parent and a tithe-returning parent can produce a child that knows not the Lord? Let's make it personal here. And then I get an insight in the next phrase. Because the next phrase begins to explain to me why that may have been possible. It says they knew not the Lord. What else did they not know? Ah, <laughs> this generation that experienced this awesome experience under Joshua and Moses forgot something along the way. What did they forget to do? Come on, what did they forget to do? They didn't tell their kids. They took for granted that because they put their children in J&A, they took for granted that because they drugged their children to church on Sabbath, they took for granted because they had family worship that that would do it. They didn't know there needed to be some personal time on a regular basis sharing with their children the goodness of God. We can't take you see, today we're celebrating Christian education. There's going to be a graduation here, uh, the second service, and then on Tuesday night. And we need to reflect on ourselves, ask ourselves the question, are we doing sufficient to make sure the next generation knows the goodness of God and his power? I'm going to come closer to you before I'm done today. So that's... That's the passage that launches us. That's what we're going to talk about. 
Is that all right? Let's pray. Father, teach us now. Amen. In Deuteronomy 16 and verse 18, Moses told them way back when they were traveling through the wilderness, I'm going to appoint judges. I'm going to do that. So judges are coming. Now, if you study the Bible, there's a progression in the Bible of God's people and their leadership. Uh, there was the patriarchal period, father rule. Father rule. And that lasted on up through the time of Jacob. And then there were the 400 and some years in Egypt of slavery. And then came the leaders, the leaders, Moses and Joshua. That was followed by the era of the judges, and then came the era of the kings. So we're now in this period of people called judges, judges, judges. In Judges 3.15 and Judges 4.6, I won't read those texts, in Judges 6.12, we not only see that these judges were leading Israel, but, 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 but there are passages of Scripture in the book that, that say they were chosen by God. They, th these judges were chosen by God. Now, I don't know, how many of you have read the book of Judges through from beginning to end? Yeah. If you've read the book, then there must be a question in your mind as to why God chooses people. Because, folk, the judges are a mess. Come on now. I mean, Gideon had a background of idol worship. He's one of the best-known judges. We won't even discuss Samson. Uh, some of them were bloodthirsty. Some of them were inconsistent. Some of them were rash. Some of them lacked courage, like, like Barak. But I, I get courage from the book of Judges because I have often wondered why the Lord chose me for ministry because I know me. You don't know me. I know me. I think I'm a bad choice for ministry. But God didn't think so. So you can't gossip. God didn't think so. My point is this. When you read the book of Judges, you find out that all God needs is a willing heart. All of these judges were flawed and, and stained and, and, and in some cases had terrible character flaws. I mean, if you read the book of Judges, you, you decide, Brother Brody, God doesn't really care who he chooses. He just needs somebody who's willing to do something. Hey, let me say that again. Did I, what did I just say? Let me say that again. Maybe I should say that again. God just needs somebody who's willing to do something. You don't have to be fancy. You don't have to have a long line of general conference presidents in your, in, your, in your bloodline. Just be somebody who has enough faith and trust in God to do what God says. Yeah, the more I study these judges, the more encouraged I get. Maybe Henry Wright as a pastor wasn't such a bad choice after all. Maybe God saw, maybe, maybe, oh my goodness, Maybe that's why you're a Seventh-day Adventist. Not because you're so holy and righteous, but God saw in you that you'd be willing to respond to truth. Give yourself a good amen. Yeah, he said, hey, they ain't much, but they'll like the truth. They ain't got a lot of education, but they'll keep the Sabbath day holy. Come on, somebody. They don't make a lot of money, but what little they make, they'll return a faithful tithe. I'm going to choose them to be a member of my church. Come on now, just sit back and rear back and say, hey, I'm somebody. Come on, I'm somebody. God chose you as he chose these judges. The book of Judges is a book of human failure. Go back to the book. Let's look at it together. Let's start after that cryptic verse, verse 10. Let's look at verse 11. And the children of Israel did what? in the sight of the Lord and served Balaam. Verse 12, they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt and followed after gods 
of the gods of the people that round about them and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And they forsook the Lord, verse 13, and served Baal and Ashtaroth, verse 14. Look at that, folk. And the anger of the Lord was hot against Israel and delivered them into the hands of spoilers that spoiled them. And he sold them into the hands of their enemies round about so they could not, so, so, so they could not any longer stand before their enemies. Verse 15, whithersoever they went, out the hand of the Lord was against them for the evil, as the Lord had said, and as the Lord had sworn unto them, and they were greatly distressed. Now, those verses actually sum up the entire book. At the beginning of the book, those verses tell us, this is the cycle that is before you. Up and down, up and down, up and down. Good days, bad days, up and and down sin and righteousness failure and success hey does that sound familiar i just described your life the book of judges is a very human book i don't know about you you may be sitting here today in church looking all pious and ready but the fact is some of us had a rough week can i get a witness yeah rough week some of us last year had a rough year some of us had a rough month, but this morning, we're here. Hey! Down but not out. Come on, somebody. Yes, sir. Yes. To be a Christian, you've got to have some grit in your gut. Got to be determined. Because if you tell the truth, the devil is on your tracks every day. So the book of Judges simply says, at good days, at bad days, up and down. In fact, to give you an example, I'm going to take you real fast now. Take your Bible. Take your Bible. Look at 121. I'm in Judges now, 121. I also will not henceforth drive I'm sorry, 121, 121, I'm sorry, 121. Wrong, wrong, wrong verse. And the children of Benjamin did not drive out the Jebusites that inhabited Jerusalem, but the Jebusites dwelt with the children of ben Benjamin in Jerusalem until this day. Now, Pastor Taylor did a marvelous job, a marvelous job the other week, showing us that one of the things that the Israelites did, they did not drive out the inhabitants. Remember that? Now, 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 don't, don't lose what Pastor Taylor taught us. He was setting us up to understand that one of our problem is we have, we, we, we have sin all around us. In our jobs, sometimes in our homes, and yet in the midst of Tacoma Park and its atmosphere, God expects us to be a faithful people a faithful people. So there's that problem. And then, in verse 27, it points out again, neither did Manasseh drive out. And verse 29, once again, neither did the Ephraim drive out. And verse 31, once again, I'm still in Judges 1, neither did Asher drive out. And verse 33, neither did Naphtali drive out. Whoa. Whoa. Whoa, 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 whoa. Now watch the next sentence. While we're living in a world of sin, God expects us through the Holy Spirit to drive out sin out of our lives. Did you follow that? You see, you may be sitting in church this morning observing the Sabbath. But are, are, are there some things in your life you have not driven out? Everybody's gotten quiet. Then I'll say amen for us all. Amen. It's hard. It's hard. It's hard to live for Jesus when there are things in yourself you've not driven out. Ladies and gentlemen, in case you haven't noticed, 
the work of the Holy Spirit is not to pat you on the back. The work of the Holy Spirit is to transform you into a Christian. And to do that, he must drive some things out of your life. Would the church say amen? amen? So that was one of the problems that faced them. And of course, their children could see. I'm still preaching on Judges 2. Their children could see that there were some things, Dr. Deshay, that the parents had not driven out. So we're trying to find out how could these, Pastor Taylor, how could this generation rear a generation that knew not God? We're now finding out that what you talked about two weeks ago may have been the problem. There were things they had not driven out, and now, and now they want their children to live righteously, though they're buying them all these games and all these TVs. Come on, somebody! Lord, help us. Lord, help us. Lord, help us. And so the pattern begins. I'm going to take you through something fast. All right, take your Bible. 2.11. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord and served Baal. 3.7. And the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. 3.12. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. 4.1. And the children of Israel again did evil in the sight of the Lord. 6.1. Anybody noticing anything? <laughs> and the children of Israel did evil in the sight of the Lord. I know it's boring, but keep reading with me. Judges 8 and verse 34, at least they got through a couple of chapters before they messed up again. And the children of Israel did not, did, remembered, remembered not the Lord their God who had delivered them, 10, 6. And the children of Israel did evil again in the sight of the Lord. Okay, that's enough. Is anybody paying attention? Well, I hate to get nosy again but I just described your life. Come on, folks, don't, 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 don't sit there like you know what I'm talking about. This week, somebody again did evil in the sight of the Lord. Don't look around at somebody else. Go look in the mirror. And last week, I did evil again in the sight of the Lord. And in March, I in the sight of the Lord. Come on now. You see, we ought to thank God every day for his grace and mercy. Because when I get into, when I get into Judges 3 next week, you're going to see that, it, woo! Calm down, Henry. Every time, every time the children of Israel did evil, Brother Anwar, in the sight of the Lord, the Lord raised up a deliverer. Come on, come on, hey! I have, to, I have to celebrate my God. That's why I made it to church this morning. Because, Wally, even though I did evil again on the side of the Lord, the Lord sent a deliverer. His grace, his mercy, his Holy Spirit. Lift your chin, my brother. You may have messed up, but God loves you. Y'all too calm for me, too calm for me. Yes, sir. My, 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 my. What a God we serve. And so things got so bad. I'm watching the clock. Don't worry about it. And sometimes I preach too long. That's all right. I'm your pastor now. You've got to live with it. Things got so bad that by the time... You get to the end of the book of Judges, look what it says. Evil again, evil again, evil again. So by the time we get to the end of the book, Judges 21 and 25, in those days there was no king in Israel, and every man did that, that which was right in his own eyes. That's how the book ends. It got so bad, Vicki, that finally folks just said, we're going to make up our own commandments. Hmm. Hmm. 
We have our own rules. Hmm. Make up stuff that ain't even in the Bible. Hmm. Blame stuff on Ellen White she didn't say. Oh. How, how does this kind of thing happen? All right, let's go back to our key text, Judges 2. And I want to look very carefully now at verses 7, 8, and 9. How does this happen? And the people served the Lord all the days of Joshua. And all the days of the elders that outlived Joshua, who had seen all the great works of the Lord that he did for Israel. First of all, verse 7 teaches us this. Listen now. All of us religiously and spiritually are influenced by other people. Right? All of us have had certain key spiritual experiences. So we're trying to figure out how they reared a generation that didn't know the Lord. One of the most important things that you do, and we must do here at Tacoma Park, we, 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 we must make sure that the young people who attend this church know the history of this church. Uh, over there, right across the street, right across the hall from my office that you all have given me, nice office, thank you very much. Appreciate it to the higher. Right across the hall from it is what you call your library. You got all these things there that show the history of this church. How many of our young folk in this church have been through that library? It's by going through that library that I found out that one of the first members of this church, one of the original 41 members of this church, was A.G. Daniels, General Conference President. How many of you knew that? Forty-one members that started this church. See, you owe it to those coming on to let them know God has been good a long time. One of my favorite stories that my dad used to tell in, 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 our, in our worship as I was growing up was the, was the time we were little boys. I don't remember, I was a little boy. And he and mom didn't have enough money for groceries and they got down and prayed and while dad was on his knees, they, they, they heard this car drive up. Dad is still praying. Yes, sir, I love this story. Dad is still praying. Heard foot tracks come up to the porch. Dad is still praying. Heard the foot tracks go back out to the car. Dad is still praying. Car drove, dad is still praying. Got up off their knees. There were nine bags of groceries on the porch. See, so he told that to me. We, 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 got, we got to tell the generation going on that God has led us through the wilderness. Do the young folk of this church know that this building used to be the General Conference Headquarters Church? That the Holy Ghost abode over this building and great decisions that shaped this church were made in these pews? I used to sit right there, right back there, about 10 rows back as a young conference president and raise my hand under the leadership of Elder Neil Wilson as we made decisions that shaped this church. There's all kind of history in these walls. We got to tell people. Ellen White is the one who said the General Conference headquarters should be here, and then by implication said this church should be here. This spot was chosen by God's prophet. Do we know that? We're standing on holy ground. This is not just any place. Tacoma Park is not just any place. This is a God-selected, God-chosen place, and the young folk who come here ought to know that. They ought to know that Ellen White, God's servant, said, I see God's work on these, on these lands. This, this triangle we sit on, called and chosen by God. Do the young people of Tacoma Park know the history and the roots of this church? Do you know? Verse 
Verse 7 says, they served the Lord as long as they remembered. And then verse 8 says, and Joshua the son of Nun, the servant of the Lord, died. Now, folk, one thing I've learned. You can't hook your wagon to anybody in the church. Come on now. Folks come and go. Elders rise, elders fall. Deacons come, deacons go. Deaconess serve, deaconess don't serve. Pastors preach, pastors mess up. The God of the church is not a human being. People fail. God does not fail. And the young folk of this church need to know that. People can stumble and fall. God never stumbles and falls. Am I talking to you, Tacoma Park? Let's just get, let's just get the stuff out there and do away with it and move on. The young folk of Tacoma Park need to know that this congregation is ready to pick up and go forward, to lift our chins. We're led by God. The young folk of this church need to know we're not going to spend our time in the past talking about what happened. The young folk of this church need to know that we know there's a God in heaven. And that Jesus saves the fallen. Verse 8 tells me, don't hook your wagon to a person. The person who baptized you into the Seventh Adventist Church may not be saved, but you better be saved. Your mother, your father may not see the kingdom of glory. That doesn't mean you can't see the kingdom of glory. Are you listening to me, church? So we're trying to find out how they reared a generation that knew not God. And the first thing they did was they forgot their history. Secondly, they let their eyes get locked on Joshua. When Joshua died, they lost their vision. And then a third thing happened. Verse 9 says they buried him. They buried him. Listen to the next sentence. Never bury your faith or your hope in the grave of what used to be. See, this used to be the General Conference Headquarters Church. More. This used to be the place where fall council met. They don't meet here no more. This used to be the place where general conference vice presidents and presidents and leaders had their membership. They ain't here no more. We here. It's us now. Come on, somebody. It's us now. Don't bury your hopes and your dreams in a grave. It's time for Tacoma Park to have a resurrection. Yes, sir. Rising up in faith, rising up in courage, rising up determined that we will be what God, because I don't think God makes mistakes. If he put 1,100 seats on this triangle, he expects us to fill them for both services. Think big or don't think at all. If you ain't got enough guts to think big, then just go on and die. You got a brain, think big. Think big. Believe what God can do. Stop crawling and creeping in this church on Sabbath morning. Bring somebody with you. Let's brighten things up around here. What do you say? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Stop. I don't want to hear about how you, how you used to have church. I don't care how you used to have church. What are you going to do now? Some of us only want to sing hymns and, 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 and have classical music. That ain't going to work. See how quiet you are? But I ain't, I, I ain't backing up. That ain't going to work. That's not going to work. Because you got a generation coming on. They don't want to just do that. We can teach them the hymns. We can teach them classical music. But every now and then they want to clap their hands. Clap with them. Then go home and pray for forgiveness. But clap with them. 
We can't bury our hopes, folk, in the past. We're here now. What are we going to do now? We got folk walking around this building right now. I told the deacons this morning, open up them front doors. Doors all locked up and closed. Open them up. So folk walking by know we have in church. I'm not ashamed we have in church here. And there's going to be some Sabbaths in the future where we will not worship. We're going to be out in the streets. All right, Henry Wright, calm down. The building we now worship in was built in 1953, completed. We got 1,213 names. We got 356 people coming. Let me ask you a question. Where are the youth and young adults who grew up in this church? Where are they? I see some hands going up, but I don't see enough. All you people who are officers in this church, every last one of you need to have a person in your department that you're training who's under 40 years old. Folk, we can't just lecture to the kids and tell them what they ought to be. We got to give them ownership. Yeah, they're going to replace us. Yeah, yeah. You don't need to be a deacon until you're 80. First of all, you can't move. You can't do nothing. Get some 18-year-old in there to be a deacon. Sit down, sit down. You're 80. Sit down. Let them give you the plate. No, folk, I'm serious, folk. This, this possessing the church and own it like it's, like it's our sacred cow. Let these young people have part in this service. Let the young folk have part here. They reared a generation that knew not the Lord. The problem was they didn't tell them. Well, there's another problem. They didn't share. They didn't share. They didn't share. Well, I seldom finish sermons, and my wife fusses at me all the time. But I'm finished. <laughs> now listen to me. Your new pastor is going to become your best friend. I know sometimes I sound strong and whatever the case may be, and I say things that bother people, but folk, I love you already. Amen. I will roll up my sleeves right beside you. But, folk, I didn't come here. I did not come here to do business as usual. It just ain't going to happen. And that's where you are. Get your letter to the conference ready. Because you're going you, you, to need to send it in about two months. Who is this guy? And Bill Miller's going to tell you, we sent him there to move forward. Is that all right? Are you willing to move forward with me? Yes. Folk, I'm going to need you. See, see, I can't, Rick, I can't do this. Unless you already came by the office the other day and talked with me about the building. That meant a lot to me, Rick. That meant a lot to me, man. This is ours. Wally came and gave me some stuff to read the, the other week. I got to read a lot to read Wally's stuff, and I'm working my way through it. Good man. He's a good man. We have to do this because we have a generation that's coming up that knows not. We got to show them. We got to tell them. What do you say? Yes. Let's stand together. Let's stand together. We need everybody standing. Join hands. Join hands. Join hands. Touch somebody. Thank you, Anwar. Thank you, man. Now, your pastor loves you, but I also need you. You have the history here. I don't. Some of you have put blood, sweat, and tears into this church. I didn't. Some of you were baptized here. 
I wasn't. Some of you had children blessed here. Mine weren't. I need you. God needs you. Let's rebuild this thing. What do you say? Amen. Let's do it. Let's start inviting our friends and our neighbors. Some will say no. Most will say no. Just pray and invite. Watch them show up. Why? Because we're not working by ourselves. Holy Spirit. I've been walking the streets. I've met all the business owners on one side. Look at me funny. I'm the new pastor of the church right over there. Oh, you are? Yeah. And then they kind of get nervous. They, want, you know, they think pastors want to ask for money. <laughs> and in each case, I say, I'm here to find out what we can do to serve you. The gentleman who runs the uh, Ace Hardware said, what did you say? I said, I want to know what we can do to serve you. He said, well, I, I have to think about that. I said, you do so. His name is Eric. Big old dude. I said, Eric, by the way, I want you to come by and see me one Saturday morning. He said, well, I, you know, I'm, I'm, we, the place is open. I said, you don't, you don't have employees? Well, yeah. I said, well, let him run it. You come and see me on Saturday morning. He didn't say yes. He kind of smiled. He said, well, he said, you got a lot of nerve, preacher. I said, yes, sir. <laughs> we have to rebuild this. This is our community. Not some fortress sitting here on this triangle. This is our town. We got to take it for Jesus. I'm going to need you. Are you with me? I said, are you with me? <laughs> Let's pray. Now, Lord, today my appeal is simple. I'm not asking anybody to come forward. We're not ready for that yet. Oh, somebody wants to transfer their membership. They can stop in the hallway after church. And let me know. Right now, Lord, we get, we getting our stuff together. We 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 getting organized. We getting we're getting rekindled. We've been battered and bruised, and we've been hurting. But now we recognize we can't spend the rest of our life licking our wounds. We've got a generation that knows not the Lord, nor the things that he hath done. And so today, in this precious group, not many of us, but enough of us, we dedicate ourselves. Give us the backbone we need. Give us the courage. And when we do evil again in the sight of the Lord, send us a deliverer from ourselves. Help us to get up and keep on walking. Thank you, Lord, for visiting with us today in this service. In Jesus' name, and all the people said, amen. Please be seated.